Good evening, coming to you live. I haven't done that in forever. <laughs> coming to you live and on demand from the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network. You're listening to Chaps Fantasy Chat. I got a lot of fun stuff to talk about tonight, guys. So, you know, it, it's interesting. Um, I, I only have one rule when I do this. First off, I'm very self-serving. I do this for myself, right? I do this because I, I really enjoy delving do- deep into this information. But then I feel it's, it's an obligation to share it with you guys, um, what I've learned. Because it is interesting and it is, um, it's helpful, right? So, um, honestly, when I go into this week to week, I really don't think about where I'm going. I don't have an agenda. But, I, you know, being someone who likes to collect data, I think collecting data and having hard information helps you when you're understanding the future, okay? So what we're going to do tonight, we're going to talk about hard data that we've extracted from the first seven weeks of the season, and we're going to use that, we're going to parlay that into the future, okay? A lot of these other places are calling this mid-season reports. I did that crap last week, right? Ahead of the curve, guys, ahead of the curve. So tonight, let's understand where we've been, understand where we are, and envision where we want to go. Okay, so what do we know, right? Again, we're we're halfway through the fantasy season. Here, or there. What 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 do what do we understand? Well, you know, we kind of talked about this last week. Um, San Francisco is really good. Dallas is really good. New England's really good. Um, I, you know, last week. Pun intended, the San Francisco-Washington game really was a wash. Those stats should be thrown out the window, okay? Um, if you look, they shouldn't have played that game in that weather. That said, I still think it holds true that San Francisco's got a really good defense. They did shut out Washington. I know it's just Washington, but they did shut out an NFL team last week. They did continue to dominate at that, at that aspect of their game, okay? So... Um, the, the thing that I think we underestimated last week when I spoke with you guys, we talked about Philly and we talked about Dallas's receivers and how they would have a good game. Well, what we didn't take into account was the fact that Ezekiel Elliott is an elite running back. Philly's actually got a pretty stout run defense and Dallas ran the ball anyway. Okay, and, and and you know, thirdly, the third thing we that I that I took away with, from last week's game was freaking New England, man. <laughs> they, they they are just so damn good, and the to do what they did, to do what they did to a team that I thought was pretty good in in, in the, the Jets, and I still think they're better than they showed last week. It really was something else, but it it speaks to to Sam Darnold's youth. It speaks to his inexperience. He's got a ton of talent, but he Belichick threw things at him defensively that he had never seen before. Okay, um, can you hear me, Ed? I see you're on here. Thanks for stopping in. Um, I, I, I if there's things you want to talk about. Bring them up. I'll be glad to talk about them as we go through. Um, But I I think it's... (laughs) So so, so for this week. So so that's where we're at. Um, We know... So just to finish, you know, talking about New England. They they, they really... um, They threw some different coverages at Darnold. The thing about Sam Darnold, if you look at his schedule at the end of the year, it really is favorable. Okay? Um... So, it's important to take note. If you're a buyer of Sam Darnold, you didn't buy him for the New England game. You bought him for the rest of the, the rest of the very, quite honestly, easy schedule he has down the stretch. Okay? Um, so, and in all honesty, he's got some talent around him. It's It's a balanced offense. Okay? Um, so don't, let's, let's not, Jump to conclusions um, with the Jets quite yet. Let, let's wait and see 
as these easier opponents down the stretch, uh, how he does against them. Because New, New England is a special type of defense. They've given up one... W- thank you, Ed. They've given up one receiving touchdown all season to wide receivers. That That's pretty dominant. So, let's move on. Let's talk about involvement, right? So, here's some guys last week who were really involved in their offense, okay? Um, how about, let's just go through a list. How about running backs with 70% of the offensive snaps last week? Chase Edmonds had 94% of the offensive snaps last week, led all running backs. Le'Veon Bell had 93%. Fournette had 90. Carson had 89. Saquon Barkley had 86% of the offensive snaps last week. That was surprising. Lat Murray, 83. Zeke Elliott, 79. Derrick Henry, 75. Mack at 71. And Cook at 60. 60, or excuse me, 70. 70% 70% of your, that's a large part of the offense, right? So let's talk about touches. Let's talk about what some of these guys did. Because I think when you, the more, more of a focal point of the, op, focal point of the offense you are, it really says a lot about how dependable you could be week in and week out. So here are some guys, and we'll talk about them case by case. Um, that that got a lot of carries last week. Leonard Fournette, 29 carries and 145 total yards last week. Two catches. I think that number good. I I, I think that's pretty consistent. He's shown that he's the, he's that big of that part of that offense. I think that that will continue. So I'm buying that, that that that's going to stay consistent. Chase Edmonds, 27 carries, two receptions, four targets, 150 total yards of three touchdowns. A lot of that was the product of David Johnson not being able to play, right, guys? <clears throat> but I think it's significant because we're kind of in the same boat again this week. And Chase Edmonds could be a big factor. This week, um, I, I see short term, I buy him. But I think as soon as Dave Johnson gets healthy again, he's going to be relegated to a second fiddle in that offense. But I think if you need to start, if you're if you have someone that's on a buy, Chase Edmonds on um, Arizona. If you have someone that's on a buy, you should pick this guy up. If you're in a pickle and you need a running back, he's going to replicate that this year, this week. Because Dave Johnson probably isn't going to play. How about Josh Jacobs? Boy, this guy's been consistent. 21 carries, 3 targets, 3 receptions, 134 total yards. He's a big part of this Oakland offense. And will continue to be. Oakland's a pretty good team, guys. I'll credit Arnie Jones. I'm a big guy. I can admit when I'm not right. Arnie Jones told me the Raiders will be pretty good this year. Just like Arnie told me, the Nationals are going to be really good when they were one of the worst teams in the in the majors the first month and a half of the season. Josh Jacobs is a player, guys. So are the Raiders. Dalvin Cook, boy, what a week he had last week. 25 carries, 149 total yards, two touchdowns. This guy, the more I think about it, the more I just, uh, he might be the best player fantasy-wise in the NFL. Kevin, welcome. Aloha. Malaho, Malaho, thank Mahalo. I know. <laughs> Thanks for joining. 
How about Derrick Henry? Talk about a workhorse. This guy, 22 carries, 90 yards and a touchdown, certainly looks to have some lucid coverage with Ryan Tannehill taking over at the helm. That has to open up the passing lanes. I love Derrick Henry the rest of the season. (laughs) Talked about this guy last week. Lamar Jackson. Guys. As a quarterback. 14 carries, 116 yards and a touchdown. 8.29 yards per carry. This guy... I was on him in the preseason. He is, he's, he's in, the, in my opinion, he's the number one fantasy quarterback because of this. Because, because he can do it with his legs. But he hasn't disappeared with his arm. I really look for Hollywood Brown to be a big impact down the stretch. He's missed him. Here's another one, Ed. Latavius Murray. Again. Should be a big part of the offense again this week. 27 carries last week. He caught 5 of 7 passes, 150 yards and 2 total touchdowns. Lap Murray, they're on a bye next week. Don't think they're going to rush back Kamara given they're on a bye next week. I just don't see that happening. Lap Murray is... He's a must play in fantasy, guys. If he's out there on your wire, you got to get him. If you're playing DFS, he's your foundation. He's the guy you start your DFS lineup around this week. I told you this is going to be out running backs. How about Allen Robinson, though? He got 16 targets last week. Caught 10 of them for 87 yards and a TD. That's a lot of the offense. I mean, that's a big part of the offense. How about Mike Thomas? 9 of 12 for 131. Again, large volume, right? How about Darren Waller? 7 of 8 for 126 and 2 TDs. This guy's been the rookie of the year. And people are talking about him because he's in Oakland. Hidden gems. Let's talk a few hidden gems, and then we're going to move into Thursday night. Have fun, guys. You like this? Got questions? Shoot me. Let me know what's up. How about Zach Pascal? I'm going to talk about the Colts in a little bit. Six of seven, 106 yards and two touchdowns. Quietly evolving into the number two receiver in Indianapolis. Here's one. Corey Davis. Don't say it too loud. But if he's out there, go pick him up. Ed, go pick him up. Corey Davis, 6 of 7 for 80 yards and a touchdown. It's important to understand why you pick up Corey Davis, though. You pick up Corey Davis because Marcus Mariota couldn't bust through a wet paper sack with a football. Ryan Tannehill's a good quarterback. Not a good quarterback. But a competent, all he has to be is a competent quarterback. He's got great weapons around him. He's got Corey Davis. He's got A.J. Brown. He's got Adam Humphreys. He's got Derrick Henry. He's got Deion Lewis. He's got John U. Smith. We'll talk about him in a little bit. Okay. Delaney Walker's hurt. Hidden gems. How about Mark Walton? 14 carries, 66 yards. Perspective. 14 carries. Kenyon Drake had six. Caleb Balazs had three. He's taking over as the bell cow. Not the bell cow because it's Miami and they're not very good. The lead back in Miami. And he's done fairly effective. Done a fairly effective job. AJ Brown. 6 of 8 for 68 yards. Again, it's important to take note because 
all of a sudden find themselves with a competent quarterback. Okay? That's the important part. <laughs> I have this labeled as, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you got to have fun, man. I'll tell you, if you guys didn't know this by now, I do this for me. I do this because I like doing it and I like sharing it with you guys. But but really, I, I again, I, I kind of, I let the narrative go where it goes. Um, I, and, and what this is, is just um, crazy stuff I find when I'm going through the statistics, right? How about Gerald Everett? <laughs> he got targeted 10 times last week. He caught a whopping four of them for 50 yards and a touchdown. Perspective. Cooper Cup had eight targets. Robert Woods had seven. Brandon Cooks had had seven. Why the hell are you throwing? Why the hell are you throwing to Gerald Everett 10 times? He's catching at a 40% rate. Are you high? Sorry. I apologize. That's ridiculous. What the hell? (laughs) Here's one. How about Kyle Rudolph? I called this. I I called this last week. Everybody was back on Thielen last week saying, oh, Cousins is going to go to to Thielen this week because he went to Diggs the week before. I said, wait. You're missing the tight end. Kyle Rudolph, 5 of 6, 58 yards and a TD. We'll talk about him again in a minute. I want to preview this game here in a minute because I know that's what I know that's what's important. That's what we all want to know about, right? I think Kyle Rudolph plays a big part again tonight. How about Mark Andrews? Two of eight targets. Eight targets. He caught two of them. He had more targets than anyone else on the Ravens. 39 stinking yards. What the heck's going on there? Tariq Cohen. He caught 9 of 12 passes. Good start, right? 19 yards. 19. On 9 catches. That's awful. What the hell? (laughs) I like this bit. I might keep doing it. 19! (laughs) He's second on the team in targets behind Allen Robinson. 19 yards. God. Okay. Here's something helpful that you could take away from all of this. And then we'll move on to tonight's game. Okay? Let's talk about the San Francisco backfield real quick. Yeah, I told you last week was a wash. Pun intended. In San Francisco. But but there is one thing that you could take away from this. When you're talking about a hard statistics glance. glance. It's volume, right? I, I, look at the... So, Jeff Wilson had five carries. Matt Prieta had eight. For 35 yards. And Tevin Coleman had 20 for 62 yards. Last three games, Breed has had 8, 13, and 11. While Coleman has had 20, 18, and 16. Coleman scored two touchdowns. This needs to be taken notice of. Tevin Coleman is the lead back now. In San Francisco. San Francisco, again, is the third best rushing offense in the NFL. And needs to be targeted. If you could probably go out and get Tevin Coleman pretty cheaply. I did it last week. I did it a week early. But I'm really saying, you can better your team by giving up one of your running backs. And getting Tevin Coleman and another player. This is how you have to think about this. Moving forward. You're in the crunch time. You could really better your team. By understanding. These statistics. Not just seeing them. But understanding them. 
right? You're listening to Chaps Fantasy Chat. I come to you during football season on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. on the Lenny Melnick Fantasy Sports Network.com. This hour is brought to you by Hotel Tango Bourbon, ready to drink. Hotel Tango is a local bar here that makes their own bourbon. Um, it's really good. <laughs> it's really good. So, let's talk about tonight's game. I'll, I will stop with the, the pandering, okay? The Vikings and the Deadskins. The Vikings... The, man, so first off, there's a revenge game narrative all over this game, isn't there? I mean, so... Everybody talks, of course, about Kirk Cousins, and I think it's valid. Kirk Cousins is, uh, you know, um, one of the hottest players in the NFL right now. You have to think he has another big game tonight. You have to think that Minnesota lets them, Zimmer lets him run it up. Stepanski lets him get his numbers. You have to think that. Um, So with Thielen being injured, Again, bringing it back, closing the circle. You really have to think that Irv Smith and Kyle Rudolph play a big part in this offense tonight. I, I mean, I, you know, if you're playing DFS, I, I, I'm telling you, um, hell, he's available in a lot of leagues. Kyle Rudolph scores a touchdown tonight, guys. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Diggs gets off too. Both the running backs have big games, okay? But but here's <laughs> here's the thing. Cousins is hot and he's motivated. For example, <laughs> the Vikings' offense. Sorry, I'm just trying to collect my thoughts here. I, I again, my I'm just trying to collect my thoughts. The Vikings' offense over the last three games has racked up 1,440 yards. Now that's just a number, right? I mean, it sounds like a lot, but it really is just a number. I mean, you break it down though; it's almost 500 a game. But it's just a little perspective. Everybody always talks about the 1998 Vikings team. Remember that team, right, guys? George, I know you remember that team. Cole Pepper, Robert Smith, Randy Moss, Chris Carter. The best stretch that team ever had. 1,349 yards. So, what, nine, 89 yards more than the best stretch that Hall of Fame class. All of those t- players will be in the Hall of Fame. That Hall of Fame class had, it's 90 yards better than that. Just a little perspective, okay? How about Kirk Cousins? 114.3 pass rating. We were all sitting there, dog, myself included, dogging on him early on in the year. 114.3 pass rating. It's the best in the NFL. And it's the highest rating in franchise history through seven games. So, you know, you're talking about a very under undermanned Redskins team. They're in trouble tonight against this offense. Throw on to that the fact that last week the Vikings gained 166 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. And the Deadskins are in trouble. The Vikings have 10 rushing touchdowns on the season. That's more than they had all of last season. Cook has seven. It's career high. Needless to say, I think this game is... 
I, I, I'll tell you, I think McLaurin has a good game. I don't know what that means. I think he gets in the end zone. He could have three catches. He could have seven catches. He's 50% of the team's air yards this season. No other receiver has more than 42%. You have to think they have to get him involved, right? So I I think Washington hangs in for a little bit. I think they maybe get 14 or 17 points. Peterson's playing on two bum knees. But I like Case Keenum. I think he's a good... He's a mutter, so to speak. McLaurin's a hell of a talent. But I think that Minnesota just bulldozes him. Cook has a big game. Madison has a big game. Diggs has a big game. Rudolph has a big game. Should be fun to watch, though. Should be fun to watch. So, let's... Let's go where the information took me this week, okay? It only took me 25 minutes to get here, but I got some good shit to share with you. I hope you guys enjoy it. So I always look at these things as how to attack, how to look at things that other people aren't looking at, okay? And the first thing I always like to look at, well... I think it's helpful to look at things in a team perspective, right? Um, And so I did that this week. And it's interesting. The the one thing that a few things jump out to me. Defense against the tight end. I think is a really interesting statistic when you look at it. Team defense against the tight end. I think it's most simple to break it down into fantasy points given up, okay? When you look at this, um, Arizona, Tampa Bay, Seattle, Tennessee, Dallas, Oakland, Green Bay, Atlanta have all given up more than 60 points on the year to the tight end position. Tampa Bay is the second worst. They've got 67.7 fantasy points given up on the year to that tight end position. This week, bear with me, I'm going to go back and forth just a bit. This week, because I want to get into these games, right? I want to get into these games as we're talking about how to target these people. How to, how to target these teams, rather. Okay? So, the second worst team against the tight end. Tampa Bay is playing Tennessee this week. Again, I talked a little bit about Tennessee at the top, about Ryan Tannehill, and about how having a competent quarterback is going to help their pass offense. First thing you think about when you think about Tennessee is Delaney Walker. If you need a tight end, if you need a flex player, Look at Johnu Smith this week. Delaney Walker's out. Johnu Smith is a competent tight end. He proved that last year. Again, he's got a quarterback who understands how to read a defense. Now, he's got a quarterback that's going to get the ball to the open guy. Johnu Smith's a viable sleeper this week. And I'll bet he's on your waiver wire. If you need a tight end, if you're desperate for a flex player, I'll give you some better later. But this is a good option. Jonu Smith. Other notes from this game. Again, on the top, tight end weaknesses. But I know I'm not going to go through all 14 games, right? Let's talk about this game. Let's talk about return games, revenge game narratives, whatever the hell you want to call them. 
Everybody likes talking about this. I like talking about the ones that are a little bit less publicized. How about Adam Humphreys returning back to Tampa Bay? How about Adam Humphreys being the underappreciated member of this receiving core with this new quarterback change? He's got 14 of 16 targets in his last three games for 117 yards. But here's the thing. Two of those were with that third Mariota. I look for things to turn big time for him. Everybody's going to talk about A.J. Brown and everybody's going to talk about Corey Davis. They'll get plenty more pub, and that's fine. They deserve it. They're more talented. But Humphreys is 5% owned? That's criminal. That's criminal. He could have 10 catches because he's a dump off back. How about Derrick Henry has rushed the ball at least 15 times in every game this season? 20 times, thrice. (laughs) He's only got over 100 yards once. Making up for it, though, he's scored in five of seven games. Now, who cares? Well, I do. Because, again, with Tannehill, the linebacker's going to have to step up, step back a step. Henry's hole should be just a little bit bigger. And when you're looking at a guy that size, I like to think he's going to get more 100-yard games. I like to think he's going to continue to find the end zone. He's the perfect buy-low candidate, guys. Okay? Derrick Henry's going to be a stud. So just a final point, then I'm going to move on. Corey Davis, A.J. Brown, and Adam Humphreys are all clear beneficiaries of, ten- of this Tennessee quarterback change. It's a pretty big deal. And again, he doesn't have to be a world beater. He just has to be competent. And I'm pretty sure he's that. These are targets, guys. These guys are out there in a lot of leagues. At the worst, you could do a hell of a lot worse than Adam Humphreys. But let's talk about the mark. (laughs) Who's the mark? If you don't know, it's you. (laughs) The Arizona Cardinals are the mark. They're the worst team in the NFL against the tight end. This is important to take notice of. They've given up 118 points to the tight end position this year. I want to go back to this list because it's effing crazy. Tampa Bay has given up 67.7 yards to the tight end. Arizona has given up 111. That's significant. That means you can target them every stinking week. And you're going to come out on top most. Once again, I'm going to give you a guy that is 0% owned that you can play this week at the tight end position. The Cardinals play the Saints this week. You're thinking, oh shit, everybody's got Jared Cook. Wrong. Jared Cook's out. Josh Hill. Pick him up and play him. Pick him up and play him. One hundred eighteen or 111 points from the tight end position. That's guaranteed they're going to give a touchdown to him. Let's talk about some other notes from this game. Kyler Murray struggled last week. He averaged under five yards in attempt last week. But it's not going to get easier. Because the Saints haven't allowed a quarterback over seven and a half yards per attempt 
since week three. Murray. <laughs> Murray has it though for a touchdown and sorry. In four games already this year. New Orleans is a New Orleans is a dominant defense. Kyler Murray's gonna struggle against this defense. Chase Edmonds is gonna have to carry the ball 27 times again. But here's the thing. He's not facing the Giants. He's facing the Saints. The Saints are a different animal. The Saints have allowed only 344 rushing yards since week two. That's 3.3 yards per carry. They've allowed no running backs to, to post top 10 numbers against them this year. It's it's interesting conundrum because I like Chase Edmonds. I, I think he's got talent, but he ain't getting it this week. New Orleans defense is underrated, and I think you'll see that this week. Latavius Murray, you're right, Ed. Again, must start. If he's out there, I picked him up. I picked him up in my work league. I love it. I love it. Yes, please. I picked him and Chase Edmonds up both. He is a must start. DFS, year long. Backyard flag football. Yahtzee. You name it. You got to start Latavius Murray this week. Here's one, Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is a stud. I I mean, we talked about it last week. He's, I think, second or third in catch rate percentage in the NFL among receivers. But here's the thing. So is Patrick Peterson. This is going to be one of the best matchups of the year. Patrick Peterson versus Michael Thomas. Guys, I'll give you a little perspective. Peterson is so good. During his nine-year career, he's never allowed a QB rating against him of 95.5 in coverage. Okay, so what? Who cares? He's facing everybody's best receiver. Every week. He's shadowing them like a blanket. This guy's amazing. I think Mike Thomas has a game. I think it's very workmanlike. I think he scores. But I don't think he gets over 50 yards. He might get six or seven catches. That's worth watching just to watch those two guys jockey at it. So, we talked about tight ends. Let's talk about running backs. And, and, and again, so, so just, to put, just to put a closed loop on it. Okay, as we go into these bye weeks, we're currently in them. <coughs> it's important to take notes of these things. I just gave you two tight ends that literally no one's going to have. Unless they're doing this delve. Unless they're diving down this deep into the information. And most people are lazy. This takes a lot of work to dig to get. It's not easy. But I love doing it. So I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So, circle back. Johnny Smith, Josh Hill. Two guys I guarantee you are on the waiver wire that you could pick up and play this week. Okay? How about run defenses? I think this is pretty interesting, okay? Um, So, again, breaking it down to fantasy points because I think that's the easiest way to do it. Green Bay second, 158. 
The Giants third, 158, they're really bad. The Dolphins, 156, is fourth. The Lions, 155. But the team I left out. So again, the second worst is 158. The Bengals have given up 187 fantasy points to the running back position this year. I'll say it again for emphasis. Number one, in a bad way, the Bengals, 187.5 points. Two, the Packers, 158.6 points. That's a big difference. That means to me they're a lot worse than the rest of the teams. So let's talk about it. I love this, man. This is so much fun. The Bengals, they play the Rams. The Rams are getting 13 and a half points. Who do you target? You target Todd Gurley? Who's got who's nursing a quad injury? Are you a target Daryl Henderson? The rookie pass catcher. How about both? Both of these guys are viable. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that's a must. This is a one o'clock game in London. Okay? Pay attention to the pregame. It's a long flight from Los Angeles to London. I know this sounds quirky. But Todd Gurley, sitting in a plane for seven, eight hours, it might not go so great. Daryl Henderson could be a real gem this week. He could be this week's Lat Murray. He could be this week's Chase Edmond. I've given you guys, now two of them are probably gone. Daryl Henderson's probably out there. If you need a running back, Daryl Henderson's probably out there. How about a revenge game narrative that no one's talking about? Zach Taylor versus Sean McVay. Should be interesting. Couple interesting stats from the game. But I think it's important to take note before we do that. I can't emphasize enough. Go look and see if Daryl Henderson's out there. Go pick him up. Put him in your lineup. If you're weak anywhere, put him in a flex. Nine times in franchise history, the Bengals have started 0-6. 0-6 is a lot. So is nine times. That doesn't scream well-run franchise, does it? Last season, Robert Woods had less than 61 yards two times all year. This season, four of his seven games, he's been under 50 yards. What a difference a year makes, huh? It's not his fault. It's not even Goff's fault. Entirely. Their offensive line is so bad. You have to think this week against the Bengals. You have to get it right. Here's the thing. Here's the misconception about the Bengals. Everybody thinks when you look at the statistics that the pass defense isn't bad. Well, wide receiver cores have only had to throw just under 16 times a game against the Bengals because their run defense has been so bad. Right? Right? So, what that's saying to me is, 
If this isn't a week for the wide receivers for the Rams to get right, I don't know what is. You got a bad run defense. You got a bad pass defense. And that team is actually pretty talented skill-wise. Circle back. Todd Gurley, Daryl Henderson. Daryl Henderson might be there on the waiver wire. If he is, you should pick him up. Okay? I want to commemorate real quick. We're getting getting down there on time, but I think it's important to take note. The first place Indy Colts. Look, everybody knows me knows I'm a Steeler fan. I'll give credit where credit's due. Indianapolis is certainly having a good season. At 4 and 2, they play the Broncos this week. In particular, I want to I want to talk about Jacoby Brissett. Career high passer rating of 126.7. Career high 326 yards. And a career high four touchdowns. Two 300 yard games on the season. And he's still for multiple touchdowns in five of his six games. He's not getting enough credit, guys. Everyone thought after Andrew Luck retired abruptly that the Colts will be a laughing stock. All he has done is led this, this team to a 4 2 record, first place in the AFC South, 1,388 yards, 14 touchdowns, and three interceptions. That's elite. That's not good. That's elite. He's not getting the credit he deserves, guys. So, so this is this is an interesting game. T.Y. Hilton. He's been Brissett's go-to. He's averaged eight targets per game. And he's caught three quarters of the ball stone his way. 30 of 40 balls. As of last week, it was second best in the NFL amongst receivers. Again, he's not getting the credit he deserves. He's got five touchdowns on the season. One short of what he had all of last season. How about Darius Leonard? Returned from injury last week. He had a ho-hum 10 tackle interception performance. The defense clearly misses when he's not there. Zach Haskell. Slowly emerging, not slowly, quickly emerging. And to Indy's number two receiver. Six receptions, six receptions, 106 yards, two TDs. Goes a long way in earning Frank Reich's trust. I look for that to continue. Let's talk about Denver real quick. Because they just lost Emmanuel Sanders. He's a big part of that offense. But I think it really pays dividends. Here's another guy you should go out and target. Cortland Sutton. Sanders is averaging 6.3 targets per game. Those targets have to go somewhere. Yes, Deshaun Hamilton. As someone to monitor. But I think Sutton has really shown that he's capable of being a wide receiver one this year. He said double digit fantasy points in six of his seven contests this season. 
He's only caught touchdowns in two games. He has three total on the season. He had two week four against Jacksonville. He's seen no less than seven targets on the season per game. And he's caught no less than four balls. So he's a big part of that offense. Sutton's on pace for 83 catches, 1,289 yards, and seven touchdowns. But I think that's going to go up. I think you could add another 10 catches on, another 100 yards on there, and another couple touchdowns. Someone you might be able to sneak through. Put a cheap trade offer on for him. Cortland Sutton. So, that's kind of where um, it, it seems to be the natural place to lay out. The, the, the other team I like, I, I, no, I want to go back. I want to talk about this real quick, okay? I'm sorry, I didn't write this in, but I, I think it's important to talk about. So, when you look at this rushing stat, okay, <clears throat> the team that doesn't jump out that should is the Miami Dolphins. The Miami Dolphins are right up there with the Bengals in that they're fourth on this list and fantasy points given up to the running back position with 156 point game, point, points given up. They've only played six games. They've had their bye week already. So Miami... Is someone else to target against? They they are rivaling how bad the Bengals are. Okay, let's put it that way. They play the Steelers this week. James Conner's banged up, but I really think he's going to play and be effective. Mason Rudolph comes back. Benny Snell. Although, I, I just read before I came on here, Jalen Samuels is close to coming back. So, that's something you, you want to watch um, game day. But, but Benny Snell's someone who's really shown that he's a capable back. And I think they're going to continue to give him more opportunities as, as the Steelers go down the stretch run. Because they really are just finding out what they have with Mason Rudolph, Deontay Johnson. I love Deontay Johnson this week, guys. Everybody talks about Juju Smith, Schuster, and I think he's going to have a big game. I think everybody for the Steelers is going to have a big game. That's your Monday night game, by the way. But being a Steeler fan and being the fact that they're playing Miami, I think it's important. And that it's important to take note traditionally the last couple of years under Tomlin. The Steelers have struggled against bottom-feeding teams. It's important to know that. But I don't think that's going to happen here. I think this team doesn't have an ego. They've got a lot of talent, but their ego's been knocked down a couple notches. James Conner, Arnie texted me this morning asking me, is James Conner a safe play this week? James Conner is one of the best plays on the slate this week. But so is Benny Snell. So is Deontay Johnson. So is Juju Smith-Schuster. I think the Steelers open up a captain and say no can of whoop ass. The over-under is 43 points. I think you're eating popcorn by the middle of the third quarter on that. You got to take the over. I think the Steelers score a ton of points on these guys. I think Mitz, here's a bold prediction. I think Minka Fitzpatrick scores a touchdown on his old teammates. But important point to take from this: Miami's statistically a terrible run defense. There are potentially three running backs 
that you can get service of this weekend. By priority, one is James Conner, two, Benny Snell, but you have to pay attention to see about Jalen Samuel. What the Steelers did really well against the Chargers was run that Wildcat offense. If Snell's healthy and he can play, it poses a real problem for the Dolphins if they can run that Wildcat. Okay? That's what I'm saying. It's important to watch that game time decision. You could probably roster both of them if you can, if you got a deeper bench. I love playing in leagues with deeper benches. I don't know about you guys, but I just, I like playing those, you know, having the option to have both of those guys. Um, but, but I think Sean, Connor's the shoe in. Connor's the must play of the group. Okay? So, I, I love this. I think the Steelers cover this week pretty easily. 14 points. I think that's money in the bank. So, all right, guys. I, I got a bunch of other stuff, but I, I want to get off here and watch these games. Um, Thursday nights, Chaps Fantasy Chat, Lenny Miller, FantasySports.com. I love this network. I love talking with you guys. Um, Next week, we'll, we'll get, again, I, I don't like corner myself. <laughs> I, I like, you know, kind of letting the data t- take me where it will. Um, but I do like getting getting into these statistics. And I think it's important that, that we understand that part of it too. So I, I, until next Thursday, enjoy these games. Um, go Vikes. <laughs> and uh, I'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>